I'm Jay Taylor. I'm the editor of a newsletter called Jay Taylor's Gold Energy and Tech Stocks. Uh, and I'm also the host of a radio show called Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm really pleased to be with Chris Taylor. He's the president and CEO and a member of the board of Great Bear Resources, a spectacular company, one of the hottest stocks on the planet in 2019. Kind of went sideways in 2020, uh, despite the fact they continue to report fabulous results on an ongoing basis. Uh, it's a stock that I think is very undervalued still. Um, and for reasons um, that I hope Chris can, uh, can verify, because that's what I believe. And so, Chris, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Jay. And I will say, uh, by going sideways in 2020, we added $400 million of market cap and doubled the share price. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Pretty good sideways. I'll, I'll take yes. that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, 56.2 million shares only outstanding. Uh, selling at around $14, giving the market cap a little less than $800 million in Canadian money. So, Chris, we talk about the Lasan curve, which is what I was thinking. You know, your shares haven't done much in 2020, price-wise, um, it seemingly. And, and so the Lasan curve, you know, it, it really is, it explains when discoveries are made, you have a, a steep trajectory to higher prices. People get satisfied. They think, oh, that's all there is. They, they say, let's go to something else. They sell the stock and look for the next great thing. Uh, and then you run into two or three years of sideways movement. Nothing happens, maybe more than that a lot of times before a project gets built and it gets boring for most people and the shares go nowhere. And a lot of people sort of thought, myself included, wondered if we're not there, if what am I missing? Because you keep coming out with these great results and the market doesn't seem to be paying much attention to it. So what are your thoughts about this Lausanne curve idea? Um, are we there yet? Uh, does the market have it right? They're seeing all there is, or is there more you think that uh, the markets, do you think there's something the market's missing here? Yeah, thanks, Jay. Um, what I think, uh, we're, we're now looking at price targets in terms of price performance, because that's what you're asking about. Um, all the independent analysts that cover Great Bear are expecting us uh, to have a value of somewhere between about $25 and $35 a share on average. You know, So if you read through all those reports, and the reason they're doing that is because they expect us to come up with what would be called a tier one uh, type asset. Um, what uh, the market doesn't pay attention to is that uh, we've become very predictably excellent mm -hmm. in the gold res results that we've generated. And there's a lot of companies, like if you're chasing raw return on just a month to month basis, there's a lot of companies that will get a project, have a few good drill holes, you'll see the run up in the share price and then a sell off because, you know, 99.99 whatever percent of exploration plays are never going to turn into anything. And mm -hmm. usually the more you drill them at some point, they fall apart. With us, we have over 450 holes completed on the project now. Every news release is good and it keeps getting better and bigger and the whole bit, uh, but people are chasing that immediate 10 bag or whatever. They know with Great Bear, once you're an $800 million uh, company, you're not gonna be an $8 billion company overnight. And I think that's really a reflection of why, uh, you know, the share price creeps up over time and it, and it should do over the long time if we keep adding value, but it's not gonna be a 10 bagger overnight like others. And at the same time, it's very unlikely to collapse in a similar way either. <laughs> so yeah. probably from an exploration company point of view, uh, a much uh, safer type of investment. I know I should throw some cautionary statements in front of that. Uh, but, you know, after 400 plus drill holes, it's very unlikely the gold will disappear in the project in the immediate future. Right, exactly. And uh, maybe just talk a little bit about the dimensions of the, you've got two, two different kinds of uh, gold mineralization there, the LP fault, zone, which is broad and with some high grade uh, spikes in it, but a lot of uh, disseminated gold as well. Great mining widths. And then you have the more traditional high grade hinge and, uh, and limb zones off to the west that is uh, really much like the company maker for Gold Corp. You have that as well. Uh, yep. But uh, talk to us a little bit about the potential here. And we talk about tier one projects. I've heard uh, Great Bear mentioned uh, more than once in, in those uh, as a tier one, uh, tier one kind of a project that is the Dixie project. Uh, we think of tier one projects as uh, those that produce 500, 600,000 ounces a year over 10 years or so. Uh, you, you see that as uh, Dixie having that kind of potential in your mind. I know this is a forward looking statement. Um, you can't say you do until you've done all the, all the work, but 
<laughs> what are your thoughts? Uh, you put me in an awkward position, but I think yeah. this is where the proof comes out of the drilling. And yeah. uh, that's why analysts exist. Uh, so that guys like me um, don't have to make these kind of out on a limb statements. Yeah, that's true. I, I think the best that I can point to is some of those good reports, which are saying exactly what you're talking about and just point people to the news releases. I mean, like I mentioned, a lot of companies can drill a few good holes. Very, very few can drill hundreds of good holes like Great Bear. Projects that generate hundreds of good holes tend to be tier one projects. Those are some of the most valuable projects in the world. They are the cornerstone of mining operations for the big global mining companies. And if Great Bear uh, is correct in having one of these on our hands, we'll be one of the only junior companies on the planet with one. And that's a value prospect that just a lot of people can't duplicate it. You know, it's very challenging to do that in the industry because these are very rare discoveries. We mentioned that you have a market cap a little under 800 million right now. Uh, if you were to achieve that kind of status, what kind of market caps do some of these larger companies, I'm thinking companies like Canadian, uh, projects like Canadian Malarctic's uh, project, um, yeah. the, the, the Detour Lake project, for example, those kind of projects, what kind of market caps or what kind of prices do those projects uh, fetch when they're sold out in the market or sold to big producers? Well, I guess in US dollar terms, what are we? I don't know the exchange rate today, but we must be about a $600 million yeah. company, right. somewhere in that range. And those projects sold uh, for a little bit further down the road. So they had uh, permitting in place and they were beginning to build, but they they um, they had sold for uh, like Canadian Malarctic was about $3 billion. And I believe Detour Lake's another one in Canada, it would have sold for four and a half billion dollars or somewhere in that range. So these are the kind of values that we would aim to achieve with Great Bear. And uh, again, like like you pointed out at the beginning, uh, we've got a really tight share structure. So you know, uh, if you multi if you divide uh, those kind of multi billion dollar values by the you know fifty seven million, say sixty million shares that we have outstanding now, it equals a price target that's uh, multiples higher than where we're at. That's what we're aiming for. And that's what we, we actually, quite frankly, uh, we have a hundred million Canadian in the bank now. That's enough to drill for two years, massive programs. That's, uh, we believe, surely enough money uh, to generate an initial maiden resource, an initial preliminary economic assessment. And uh, that should be what brings in that higher valuation uh, once people can see the nature of what we're dealing with here. Chris, you have, uh, you know, companies like yours that start up as penny stocks that make a great discovery. They're not that many companies that are so fortunate as you are to have done so, but uh, mostly they're looking over, you know, trying to figure out a takeout um, strategy. They're looking for somebody, a big boy to come along and buy them out. Mm -hmm. However, when I look at your recent hires, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe, maybe you're going to look for optionality here because you've hired some really strong people recently that might give you those kinds of skill sets. Would you perhaps just talk about the people you've added to your board and to your to your company recently because i think very impressive people big players. Uh, yep yeah thanks and there's a false dichotomy in the industry like people say are you gonna build it or are you gonna sell it and the bottom line is uh, guys like our chairman mike kenyon uh, by building a series of mines there's been about half a dozen that he's been involved with on the construction and development side by building the mines he sold the mines Right, because if you're a major company looking to purchase a project, you want somebody else to do the hard yards of the permitting and initial development work and that kind of stuff. And then you want to be the one reaping the benefits of production. So one of the best ways to get taken over is by trying not to be taken over, <laughs> paradoxically. And uh, the guys on our board, like Mike, who's one of the uh, best known, uh, you know, kind of gurus in the mining industry in Canada, uh, with one of the most successful track records uh, along those lines. I mean, this is a, a method that he's employed. We have other people that we added Paula Rogers uh, late last year. Uh, she's done major project financing, like a billion and a half dollar raise to put the Pueblo Viejo project in the Dominican Republic together. That's a major tier one asset that's in mining stage now. Uh, and then we've got uh, just um, recently, we added Gil Lawson, uh, who was the mine manager of the main Red Lake mining operation in our area, has worked extensively with the First Nations people on some major power uh, distribution projects and was the mine general manager at uh, Muscle White, which is one of the biggest gold mines in Ontario. Plus, he was in charge at Gold Corp of all uh, their global operations, oversight on all the mining operations, evaluations, economic studies, feasibility studies. Uh, so these are the kind of people that we're able to attract. They are the best in our industry. 
And uh, these aren't promoters. These are not people that are trying to pump and take money out of shareholder pockets. They're, these are people that are about building value. And those are the kind of people when you have an asset like ours that, that you're just privileged to work with them because they know what they're doing and they've done it really successfully before. Yeah, the serious creators of wealth, these, these people are strong professionals, no doubt about it. Well, in summing up here, uh, Chris, what do you think investors should really be keeping their eyes on? I mean, it's um, just co constant drill results, I guess, with the kind of ag aggressive drill program we're going to be getting, what, every week or so, every couple of weeks or so, probably get some more results from you, I suppose. And then the big thing that I'm looking forward to is your maiden resource. And we can start to fathom the economics of this thing. We start to see the dimensions, continuity, and so forth, grades, uh, I think, people are going to start to imagine, I believe we're going to imagine, they're going to imagine something more than they're imagining right now. The market is obviously not totally focused, but what should people be looking, uh, what should investors who care about this company be watching? Now, if you like gold and you like the growth component of a gold story, then Great Bear is probably uh, the right sort of company to look at for you. It's not it's not to the point where uh, I can't say uh, that it's going to go up 10 times tomorrow, uh, but I can not I can also say uh, with confidence that it uh, is very unlikely to lose 90% of its value when we're sitting on an asset like this. You never know. Uh, maybe the whole market will go bananas one way or another. Uh, but the bottom line is, if you like gold and you think there's upside on owning a major tier one discovery, if you think you're looking for a company that can grow, that still has the runway, uh, to grow a lot. They've already got the money to do it, so they don't need to raise capital for a couple of years. Major drill program, uh, far beyond what's normal in the industry. I think we have uh, one of the second or third largest exploration programs on the planet. Um, you know, And you think uh, that it's an environment uh, either where you want to see a major mine built or you're interested in that M&A sort of cycle. I think all of these are good reasons to have a look at GBR uh, because GBR is an exceptional discovery in an exceptional jurisdiction. Well, it certainly is, Chris, and, uh, and plenty of news coming to keep your eyes on. So thank you so much for spending time with us explaining this story, because I really do believe it's one that people need to pay attention to again. Um, there's going to be a lot of good news ahead, I'm convinced. So thank you so much uh, for being with us again. Great to see you again, Jay. Thanks very much. You bet.